Minister Rudd, thank you for your speech. But with all due respect, it's easy to talk in platitudes about justice and progress and peace. When I go home to Australia in July, I'll go home to a country where there is no action on climate change, where there is a terrible human rights record, where Aboriginal people and, and white Australian people have a, a gap of life expectancy of about 20 years, and where gay people who love each other can't marry one another. What do you say to the young people like me, millions of us, who are disillusioned with Australian politics? What I'd say to you is uh, enjoy the fight. Get in there. I was the first Prime Minister of Australia to come out in full public support of marriage equality. None of my predecessors did. I did. I don't know if any of you happened to see the debate I had in the election campaign on that, uh, where I had a particular exchange with um, a preacher who didn't particularly like my position. I explained to him from Christian biblical principles why it's okay to be gay and why it's okay for same-sex couples to have the same marriage entitlements as anybody else. So this requires a bit of leadership. Uh, at present, uh, the government has a different view. On all the matters that you raise and your concerns, legitimate concerns, about where our country needs to go and what its voice should be in the world, I would say to you and to all your colleagues and co-students here this evening, fellow students here this evening, is get engaged, get active because politics is not just about what those folks do up there. Politics is about what you all do in the community through political parties to be vehicles and agents for change. Because if you do that at home, you also have a capacity to do that abroad. For example, when we're in government, I was proud of the fact that we were able to deliver Australia as one of the top 10 aid donors in the world. For the first time, we started delivering large-scale programs in Africa. For the first time, we started to radically enhance our support for the global institutions funding vaccines to eliminate um, uh, uh, so many of the um, systemic diseases around the world and became, therefore, one of the central players in this. The question for you in the political process is to ask those who come after us whether they are doing that as well and to hold the, the candle of responsibility to them as well. There is a limit sometimes to what you can do. I look back at the period in which I've been Prime Minister of the country. Not everything was got right, but let me tell you on these big questions of avoiding a further, another depression in the global economy, working with the G20 to prevent that, keeping positive uh, economic development and preventing mass unemployment in my own country, we did that. On climate change, you mentioned the first time in Australia's history we had a mandatory renewable energy target of 20 per cent. For the first time in Australia's history, last year our greenhouse gas emissions started coming down. For the first time in Australia's history, we have a price on carbon. For the first time in Australia's history, we ratified the Kyoto Protocol. Now, all those things were done in the midst of enormous domestic political controversy and occasionally getting a night's sleep uh, in between. So my challenge back to you and to all of you who believe in what I would describe as a positive, humane future for the entire human family. Get engaged in the political process. Don't think it's for them out there. You are the heart and soul of your various national communities. Get in, contribute your energy, your ideals, your enthusiasm, and become, therefore, the agents of change that I referred to before. I thank you.